Rod Stewart did a cover of that song in 2001. You guys should listen to it. Thank you for one person. I was, I was going to start by talking about the success of the show or what's coming up, but Ukash, you wanted to talk about your favorite three conspiracy theories. Is that right? Yeah, guys, let's start with NASA and go from there. I mean, this is going to take too long, and I want to stay employed. So okay, we'll do that next time. Um, let me start with you, Joe and Joe. Um, this show is averaging more than 11 million viewers. Um, are you? Uh, how chuffed are you that people are? You know, so many people are watching this thing in season two. Oh, I mean, we are just delighted. So chuffed. <laughs> so chuffed. Yes. <laughs> I've never used that word before. No, my God, we're so grateful. Like there are so many people that work so hard on this show, and the fact that people are finding it and enjoying it, and we get to keep making more is just such a gift. So we're. It's 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 wonderful. It's really wonderful. Um. You ended season one as uh, as Sam and Jay uh, opening the the B and B. Um, obviously, that can lead to, to more things going wrong. But but the thing that I I figured during season two, it just allowed you to bring more guests. In. It, was that why this happened? Can you talk through some of that? Talk through some of that process. Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, I mean. We didn't want it to be like uh, just the guests of the week, but uh, it certainly allows us to have stories, you know, walking right through the door. We realized that we can only reveal so many new ghosts and say so many people died on the property um, before it strains credulity. So it's good to have some livings walking through the door. And also, uh, Ukarsh's character can talk to them, which is nice. Yes. Yeah. Otherwise, you were getting a bit lonely, were you? Yeah, I mean, it's just like being at home. I got kids at home, I ignore them, I go to work, I ignore the ghosts. It's like, it's very, uh, yeah, it gets lonely, for sure. So I'm happy we have some humans to talk to. <laughs> um, I love that you kicked off season two with a bad Yelp review. Have you ever left a bad Yelp review, Rose? No, I'm very phobic of leaving reviews, and I, I, my Airbnb is one of my proudest um, Acclaims, whatever you say, accomplishments. My I flew in yesterday from New Zealand. I'm sorry, but um, but my Airbnb, like I don't like anything being off with it. And my husband recently was like, "You've got to tell them that their car park is too small, like you can't fit the car in." And I was like, "No, I have this immaculate, like, ten year deep Airbnb thing. Like I'm not, I just won't do that because it'll come back to you. You know." You're worried about getting. Yeah. But no one can park it. If you're looking for an Airbnb in Freshwater in Sydney, Australia, there is some real problems unless you're riding in a mini. <laughs> I hope they don't look me up. <laughs> I don't care. Evidently. Um, the ghosts are essentially now your family, aren't they? In this season. Yeah, yeah. It's um it's interesting with Sam, you know, seeing all these ghosts and having this kind of very otherworldly experience in her life, I always thought that would be the strangest thing to play. But actually, you know, for me, I'm super close to my family in real life. And playing a character who has this really strained, disconnected relationship with her immediate family is probably one of the furthest stretches for me. Um, more so than the ghosts living in your More so than living with a house full of ghosts, yeah. Um, so I, it makes sense to me that she's really needed that, and she's needed that connection. I can't imagine how that would be to grow up without, without the intimate family relationships that I've had. So. I definitely feel very invested in Sam's journey to kind of create the family that she didn't didn't have. And she's so lucky with Jay, who is the most supportive patient husband ever. Um, Jay. Jay, not good cash. Well, I mean, they wrote him. <laughs> it's, it's definitely not me. <laughs> These guys did it. Yeah, yeah. No, they've given her um, so much to, to jump from with that. And, and you can feel why she is sort of... The relationships with the uh, the ghosts feel like familial relationships now. They're really complicated and um, loving and deeply appreciative, but also sort of frustrated. And um, yeah, they're like siblings and children and a whole family in one. She suddenly ended up with siblings and children that you your character can't see. Uh, do you feel like you know them any better, even though, even though they're still? Uh... Actually, maybe Naomi and I could talk. Your wife and I could probably talk a lot about this. About what? How I just ignore everything happening in the house? Yeah. It's not true. <laughs> I'm there. <laughs> I just get uh, paid to do it with you. Um, uh, you know, the cool thing is the Joes have created with Jay, sort of this character. They could have easily had the whole season be Sam trying to convince Jay that the ghosts are real. And he's like, I don't know. This seems kind of weird. But 
what you guys did was he's a character who's on board from the jump. He's supportive, he's enthusiastic, he's super confident in his wife's belief, and he's just there to support in any way he can. So you get a lot of really fun storylines where although I can't communicate with the ghosts, almost everything I'm doing is in support of them. Um, you know, whether, you know, I guess Hetty's possession is the only time when we were literally in the same body. But like, uh, there's a Halloween episode where we're trying to get somebody exor exercise, the maid, what, right? The maid, you guys know. Does that, do any of you watch ghosts? Thank you. Thank you very much. But it's really fun to go on these missions um, and to just be so in love with his wife and the world that she's created that you can just go anywhere and the answer is yes. Yeah, but the, um, these two, I think, you know, are, are really the heart of the show. I, uh, uh, we were on set at, uh, in Montreal, we shoot the show in Montreal, and we were doing like the second or third episode, and Trent O'Donnell, who directed the pilot and uh, uh, has done a bunch of episodes, he was there, and he, he was saying like, it's obvious, but he, it sort of clicked with me at that time that the show is going to live and die with, with this relationship with this couple at the center. And, you know, because there's a lot of crazy, funny, big things that happen, but you have to really be invested. And, uh, you know, they bring uh, that realistic, uh, you know, loving couple to the center of the show, which I think makes everything work. And talking of crazy, weird things happening, you've had some quite a few guest stars this season, um, Tara Reid being one of those. Look, Ash, I, I read that you wanted Jean-Claude Van Damme to play the father. <laughs> Did you manage to persuade the Joes that, uh, to get to Jean-Claude? I'm just saying, what if Jean-Claude Van Damme was shooting a movie at the B&B, &B and then hijinks ensue? And you, you can fill 24 minutes with that. This is, this is a text we get from Utkarsh about once every 10 days, which is about Jean-Claude Van Damme could be what he's doing at the Woodstone. We're open. Um, we are open to it. I'm here. I'm here. We're to not saying no. We just haven't. We haven't cracked it yet. Have you reached out to Jean-Claude's people yet? We haven't made it Look that has. <laughs> I've tried. I've reached out to the abyss many times. No responses yet, but hope is there. <laughs> I hope we see that that way would be funny. Um, uh, Joe and Joe, we were joking, uh, as you can tell from this uh, plummy British accent, uh, I know the BBC version, which is ending after its fifth season, you are currently in its your second season and you have already made more episodes than they have. Uh, any thoughts of bringing any of those ghosts into this ghosts? Well, um, we did have Matt Baton, one of the British creators, uh, in an episode this year playing not uh, his same character. But uh, yeah, it sort of makes our heads explode when we think about bringing them over as their actual ghost characters from, from the British show. But we love having them as guests, and we want to do that more. It was so exciting having <laughs> Matt Baton on set. Like, I'm an OG fan of the British series, and, and he was so incredibly... Um, generous with the stories he shared about how you know how they came up with the idea in the UK and it was just really cool it was a little bit of like a, um, a brain meld that you, know, you don't really expect to sort of meet these people and have experiences with them but he was so kind and so talented and um, and really funny in the show so hopefully there's there's room for more yeah we want to get as many as we can over here yeah, yeah that was awesome for us because I our main goal when we watch the British series and got a chance to adapt it was just to make them feel like they were not embarrassed and um, you know we wanted them to be happy with what we did whether people watched it or got on or whatever and, and uh, you know him being on was just very validating and it uh, was so fun for us to do. Yeah I bet I can imagine that. Um, you mentioned people dying at the house yeah. otherwise known as not being sucked off. <laughs> Um, as I think the Daily Beast called you, it's the, the horniest show on television. Was that intentional? I don't know that that was intentional. No. It just happened organically. No, uh, um, no that's so funny. That, that specific joke comes from the British creators. They actually, one of the email, when we got picked up the series, we got a, an email specifically titled Sucked Off. And they were basically, not sure if you're aware, this is a term the ghosts use. Feel free to use it if you want. And we we grabbed that baton and we ran with that baby. <laughs> I'm a little bit surprised it got by your spam uh, email server. But, uh, <laughs> we've got a couple episodes to go uh, into season two. You've already been picked up for season three, so I'm sure everyone can please. Um, what can you 
you, what can you tease about Sam over the next couple of episodes, but then have you started thinking about uh, season three and where we might th see things? Oh yeah, the writer's room just opened up again, so I am, uh, as soon as we finish this, I'm going to be cornering these two and getting anything I can out of them to, to know what happens, because definitely the end of season two has um, left me on the edge of my seat, so I'm Quick very up. curious. Yeah, yeah there's, there's lots that people will be wondering about over the break, I think. <laughs> Yeah, we, we, we ended with a cliffhanger that we can't talk about, but uh, we also, in the episode before the finale, we solved Alberta's murder, uh, finally, which has sort of been like a season-long uh, mystery. We've been, we've been... I think it's one of my favorite episodes that we filmed. Yeah, it was really, really cool. And that speaks to this idea that, you, you know, it's a, it's a comedy that you can jump in and out of different episodes, but if you, you know, watch the whole way through, it's, it's, there's a serialized element to it. Yeah, lightly, lightly. You know, all the all the characters have sort of ongoing storylines that we can touch every now and then. You know, we have a, a huge cast, which is a, a strength of the show. We can we can go in so many different directions because everyone is just a, a home run hitter. But it's also we have a lot of characters to service, so a lot of times someone will be cooled off for a couple of episodes. Um, but it's but yeah, so it's a lot. It's a lot to service. That's the challenge of having such a, a big group of an ensemble cast, right? Yeah, oh. absolutely. A challenge, but also like a, a big plus. Like I said, there's so many. And for us, I mean, I don't know if it's the same for you guys, but it's so exciting to just have different friends to play with, you know, and, and to have different dynamics. Uh, each time you put sort of a different two or three people in a room, it brings out different sides to everybody. It's like Sam has many facets, and she's one person with Hetty, and she's one person with um, Nigel or, you know, somebody else. So I, I just love, like, I think you get to see the textures really pop more and more throughout this season and, and hopefully into season three as well. But Kash, apart from Jean-Claude Van Damme turning up as your father, any hopes for, for Jay in season First three? of all, I would show up as Van Damme's father. Uh, no, I think the just the normal season three stuff, alien invasion, underground society, you know, some way for maybe me to go off into the world of the uh, the undead. I thought you weren't going to talk about conspiracy theories. I'm just saying, season three, all bets are off. They, they already greenlit it. We can do whatever the fuck we want. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> you guys That's just write in your suggestions either, right? and, and I'll take notes. Well, that seems like the best place we can end this season three. There you go. Rose, Cast, Joe and Joe. Thank you.